I think, I don't know what it is these days, where people make things complicated. I watched, um, in the name of it, Cloud Atlas. Have you seen that film? Jesus. Don't know what's going on. You have to take notes whilst you're watching it. There's nothing relaxing about watching a film. I think we've got more intelligent, but we're just making our lives more difficult. Years ago, people were quite happy watching a black and white film with no, no speaking. You know, it was all uh, like silent movies. Dead easy to follow. Now, you watch Cloud Atlas, tell me if you know what's going on. I watched it all because you kind of think, well, it might all make sense in a minute. About two hours long, I didn't have a clue by the end. I, didn't, I, I don't know what had just gone on. Whereas this, nice easy read, no big words in it, uh, I write the way I speak, which is, I think that's the way it should be. So you know it's coming from me. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I can tell you. I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just say, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought because, um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately, because they're gonna the die next anyway. day everyone's gone, so yeah, there's so, not gonna be mourning families. But, but then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. Well, that's so I true. Know, well, I know the moral guilt that I'll feel is over in, in a few hours. Morality isn't relative just to repercussion, is it? Because no, but you, the point you is can you do things without repercussion. But often people say, you know, what would you do if you never got caught, or would you do it if you know, I, I, there is repercussions for that person, as grave as they might be, just because you feel that it's no big deal either way, that they're only going to live another eight hours, they might feel differently. And you're saying, well, you won't care because you won't be around. But then, why do people care about their loved ones when they won't be around? Why do people get a will ready? Because my point is that they know that those people will continue to live for an in indeterminate amount so of time. So you do care about the p other person's Of course I do. Oh, no, of course I do. But my point is, knowing that everyone is going to be wiped off the face of the earth the following day, all of those, re all those repercussions are no longer quite the same. Um, I'd find it hard to divorce myself from my morality that's ingrained just because it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, honestly, to me it seems that we're, we're approaching, uh, just the end, the end of all things. And so, I'm saying that there's something about the fact that we're all gonna end that somehow seems very liberating. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Anne Frank? That's all, all I know about Anne is, there's no point pretending it. Anne! That I know <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right, um... Well, just tell us everything you know about Anne Frank. Uh, she was in a cupboard. <laughs> yeah, what else? If she didn't do that, I wouldn't know about her, seriously. <laughs> That's all I know about her. <laughs> Yeah. So what did she do? But what well, do you, th you think we know, about we, know, we know about we know about her cupboard because of her book, don't we? But hang on, what what in the bigger scheme of things? Why was she in a cupboard? I, I, I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. You don't know anything else about Anne Frank beyond the fact that, to quote you, she was in a cupboard. Well, what's she done then? You tell me. Why should I know more about? Firstly, her I don't think she was in a cupboard. <laughs> she wasn't in a cupboard. She was in an attic. All right. Yeah. So yeah. what was she doing? She was hiding from the Tidy Nazis. <laughs> she was hiding from the Nazis. But isn't that the first place they'd look, sort of? <laughs> <laughs> work, work from the top down. <laughs> oh, they weren't specifically looking for Anne Frank. <laughs> they weren't going, where is she? Where's Frank? If she gets that book out, we're <laughs> in the deep <laughs> shit. We've got to stop the book. Imagine, oh God. But Just anyway. imagine if he was in charge, we did put him in charge of the country. Just, terrifying. Wouldn't that be amazing? Let him run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the, uh, the president or the I Lord Mayor of London or the Prime Minister? Prime Minister Carl. I, I wouldn't know. do it! Like he's gonna be off of it! It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, but Su Suzanne was, uh, alright, me, me missus, if you're a new listener. Your keeper, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. She was, she was watching the news trying to follow some heavy stuff. Uh. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> The weather? <laughs> you know, I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> so she said, well you take notice of this, she'd be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like, they, you know, they try to teach you stuff and 
you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> so to try and get me interested in it, she was like saying, what would you do if you're president and stuff? Yeah. And I, I can't be doing with any of it. Hassle. What did you come up with? You must what have been- what, what would you- what did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little, um, the design of it, right? I yeah. said I'd, I'd, I'd have like red and blue, <laughs> sort of, do you know what I mean? Both sort of major sides into one. Yeah, yeah. Well body. that's broken the back of it. That's- that's a pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had like, uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah. That's um, good. I'm a KP nut. Yep. Um, <laughs> KP looks after me. Yeah, brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? What about you know policies, transport, um, crime, uh, uh, you know, just just law and order? Um, yeah. How would you? What would you do? How would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. No. Nah. Um, would I have to worry about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, good point. Minister. Good point. No, what um, I'm saying is, though, I mean, Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, go on then. What, what are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you? How would? What's the best way to combat? Would you? Uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you uh, introduce more community service? Would you? Would you? Make, you, would, you make, would, would you go harsher for say? For say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, drugs. Would you go harsher or? Or less harsh. There's there's pros and cons about, isn't it? Because of course you ca you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone. I don't know the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things. Have, to, have I lost you? Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can we what about the foreign situation? Would you uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, on terrorism? Um, you were aware um, of this war that we had recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new though, couldn't I just say, look, new slate? Do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah. Right. Of course you can. I'm in charge now. Let's you know. Let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? Then see what happens. <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, uh, yeah, this is excellent. Now so this is uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area. But you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends. You might on, have a say in on, it. Go on. Yeah. Would you? Uh, what would you do about uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages. See, this you... has got ca it's Cameron. I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said. Um, you know, what, what do you think about, um, uh, gay fellas getting married? And he went, I oh, know, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. Not, and I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, yeah. I don't mean to think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the gays love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the gays? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, would yeah. you, what would your take be on that, same-sex marriages? Um, and then what, having a kid? Well, just let's start off with, you well, know. that's all right, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. It's sure. not affecting anyone else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on. Why? Well, it's it's just tricky, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Well, you could be right. I'm not giving any. I mean, you know, uh, we're not. There's no right or wrong it's answer. It's all right if you were in like if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else, yeah. right, and you just had these two fellas, right, yeah. looking after you, but. Because you've got no one else looking in on that saying, oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Do you sure. know what I mean? But right. as soon as you come so to- So is it- what, what, why, the, why have they got married? Do you think the gay people turn to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, If it, if you live- if, if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go, we're definitely not gonna find a woman here, we might as well bum. <laughs> That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't- It makes don't, you wonder No, if... no, it does make you wonder. Gays don't go, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet, I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, 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 but what I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, you how are you to... brought up? <laughs> Someone just puts you there. <laughs> I don't no, know what- I don't know what this is Steve, I can't be bothered Go running on, mate, the country. I'm listening, I'm fascinated. <laughs> I can't be bothered running the country! Like, I'm too much trouble for ya! KP <laughs> takes care of me. Alright, yeah, fair yeah, enough. What okay. I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in a jungle, yeah. right, right, on Bro, What own, do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he mean you understand brought what up, though? Like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves! Chimps! 
What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, there's a fella, right, he's brought up in the jungle. <laughs> Shut up, just let him finish. Bro. Let him finish! There's no women about, he doesn't know about women, he doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right? But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. <laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> This scenario <laughs> is ridiculous. What? How has he lived? Or, or do you know what's his reference I points? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should be, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> me about <laughs> problems. Only living boy in New York. Do you like that? It's got a nice feel to it. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Lovely. Um, a bit later I'm going to be playing the Cat Steven track. It's one of the most beautiful tracks ever written. It's called Lily White off Mona Bone Jack On. Look forward to that. We've got Eminem coming up. We've had, we've got the new Eminem single as well. And, uh, a big giveaway, Rick, lest we forget. I think we should tell him what that is. Do you think so? Yeah, well, we, we all went to the BAFTAs, as you know. And, uh, we thought we could get a good prize out of this. So we got some celebs. Yes. To sign the BAFTA bag they gave away. It's just a, it's just a nice big chunky sort of cardboard carrier bag, you know. It's not the value that counts. This is what values it. Read out the sort of names. These are the kinds of celebrity names that have signed that bag. Obviously, us three, plus Graham Norton. Yeah. Angus Dayton signed it. Alan Davis, Jonathan Creek, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse. A lot of comedians, you notice. Helen Baxendale from Cold Feet, who's also been in Friends, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's so exciting. Steve Phil Mitchell McFadden. Yeah. It's an eclectic bag. I notice actually that Steve's signature is also mentioned. I think he says Steve, aka Phil Mitchell. Very oh. nice of him. Yeah. Um, Peter Davison, former, uh, former uh, Doctor Who. I noticed also that when you gave him the pen to sign it, he put the pen away. Yeah, he pocketed it. say, oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Just his wily yeah. cockney you, ways. You're not a film Mitchell now, man. Exactly. Give us the pen back. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Simon Pegg, and of course, one of broadcasting's biggest legends, Steve Wright. Oh, Steve yeah, Wright, yeah. Yeah, got him to sign it as well. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, you're not gonna find that. That's quite an eclectic and kooky mixture of celebrity names. Yeah. You know, autographs on one bag. And we maybe photocopy it and it's just, you can't we make can it. We can explain who they are. But we yeah. can give that away. Uh, and as you know, it's a little commemorative thing of the BAFTA. It's got a big BAFTA logo on there and everything. It's pretty yeah. classy. I, 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 did, did I mention this? That our agent, yeah. who was there, he ran around getting a few of these uh, autographs. And I think he held him back to a few. He went up to him and told him it was for charity. And that was why they signed it. <sighs> Which I think's. You know, a little bit cheeky, but that's what agents are like, Carl. You've got to But then again, he didn't it. get anything from him. It's not like he said, give us a pound. No, he just got, just got a Well, he said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Yeah. he made 42 yeah, yeah, quid. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, so anyway, we're gonna give that away. We're, is we're that a good prize? I think that's a nice prize, isn't it? It's a little commemorative yeah, thing. Carl, you're turning right. your nose up on it. No, what? no, no, it's, it's, it's all right. I wouldn't want it. Oh, oh. Didn't he? Do, do people get you to sort of do campaigns on the radio, like, drink Fosters? I wouldn't, but... You know, no. you can. Yeah, but look, I notice on the, uh, the big board here, it tells us that, uh, uh, this, you can win signed and framed Chemical Brothers album covers on Sunday. Well, that's just two geeks who've signed that. We've got like- We've got of three! Alone yeah. in this room! Exactly, plus we've got some of, uh, you know, Britain's, the cream of Britain's light entertainment who've signed that bag. I just- No, no, it's- I'm nice. appalled by you that you're just so disrespectful of no, us. No, but it's like how, when, when I went to the BAFTAs with you, and I wasn't really enjoying it, you were I like- I can't- He said- What?! No, you can not tell us this! Grateful. You are so like, many people. You're like a little charity case. You're like, oh, God. I had chicks queuing up yeah. around the block. You you'd usually have to, you, know, you, someone like you would have to write to Jim or Fix It or Esther Ranson to get um, to meet us sort of people. And um, now it's on your doorstep. I'm amazed that you didn't enjoy it. Why didn't God. you enjoy it? You got to go walk down the red carpet. You went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes was there. A That's load right, of other yeah. big names. We, you sat there, you had prime position. You came backstage with a load of other big names. Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we were making. That's you. That's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you, now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you, oh, I can't believe so it. So tell us why you didn't enjoy it, because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um. I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? I'm trying to think of, sort of a situation. Basically, I sat there for three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> no did you, sorry, when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? <laughs> no. <but laughs> I thought. I thought we were going to be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again. I mean, if a film's three hours in the cinema, 
Yeah. You go, well, it's long, but, you know, I wonder how it's gonna end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over <laughs> and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, I, honestly, right? I, I'd say it was one of the worst things I've ever had to do. <laughs> I cry. Thank you. No, no. I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and a nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right. And I went home and I was happy. And I got the the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, all right. Right. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne what would you have done if, or the Sunday night rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. And what did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because of, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> that's the most expensive evening ever! I guess, well, that's what I'm saying to you. And the daft thing is, it's dark in there, I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't wear a track suit, for goodness sake. It's dark in there! Oh, oh, oh. No, just a shirt and that, it doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you know make you a better I mean? person, no. We're well, not that, claiming it made you a better person. No, well that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. And you know what he said to me? I phoned him up, because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. Yeah. Like, to get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, what, you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That was what getting, me. <laughs> getting into it. Such an insult. Fair record. I just must say that we've had an email from Daryl Foss. Lots of people have emailed in and said, well done on the BAFTAs and, and well done on your room one at one. They really liked that. Thank you. There's one guy and it's Daryl says, uh, Ricky, has your dad only got one D-mob suit? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you know it's but Ricky wears the same suit every single time he appears on TV because he spent the fortune on it getting it tailored. I've only got one. It's a good suit and now he wears it all the time. And it's winter as well, it's like a pure wall, so I'm <laughs> sweating everywhere I go. Anyway, usually it's too much cheese. <laughs> I so, won't uh, buying another. Huh? I won't be buying another one. Ever. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Suzanne told me today, right, because I've, I've gotten, I've, I've handed it in today to have the uh, trousers turned up a bit. Why? Because it was a bit of a bodge job for the night. Yeah. Right. It was just some pins sort of holding it up the other night, but you didn't notice and I didn't tell you because I thought you'd be getting on the stage and saying, look at that freak over there. <laughs> with his pants hemmed up. <laughs> but I took it, I took it to the, to the place to get it done. Suzanne tells me that I'm gonna start shrinking now and getting to that age where you start going small. <laughs> I know that that must have been a revelation to you and a worry. <laughs> like, how small do you get? <laughs> how small do you get? <laughs> oh, don't right, what are we playing then? Well, I thought we'd have a bit of Marley music. Marley music? Oh, okay, go on. Baddy drawn boy and something to talk about. Well, it's a good job we've got something to talk about because we're DJs on XFM <laughs> 104.9. I'm a DJ with Stephen Merchant. Of course, they're Carl Bilkin today, then. Of course, you, you must have been excited at the BAFTAs because we did m bump into Dr. Fox. Oh, yeah. You're pleased with that. Yeah. What was the challenge again? I think the challenge well, was you had to shout Foxy. Yeah, the challenge was, it's sort of like jackass, but <laughs> wimpy jackass. Carl was our, um, cameraman for the night because we were doing the making of, um, sort of series two where we've, we've filmed ourselves sort of writing it and doing bits and pieces and going to wars and that. And, uh, uh, it's on me, and that my challenge, which I, I think, was it me that set my own <laughs> challenge? You did. I had to shout, Foxy, and get him over. Yeah. And I bottled out you about bottled. five times, I just thought he was talking to someone. Yeah. And I just thought, and then I did it, and it, I just, uh, where's the victory in that? Yeah. I shouted, Foxy, and he came over and went, alright, oh, I, I think, where's the victory? Oh, I remember Just say dive off buildings and things. I was a little bit taken about that, because even though he was joking and mucking around, he was swearing. You don't expect that from Foxy. Oh, behave, he was, uh, he was off oh, duty. Oh, no, he was, I mean, he's, he's more than wrong, but he didn't expect it to, because he, he seemed like a lovely bloke there, but he, he has. Got an enormous head. I mean, I'm not gonna. But I'm, I'm not disrespecting him. I think he's a lovely guy. But yeah. his head is huge. But he's in proportion with his big body as well. He's a big. He's a chunky wombat of a man. <laughs> True enough. And it was so am I. It was problem getting him on on screen. Sure, because <laughs> of the huge head. Yeah, I was struggling. No, I know. Well, I know that Popeye <laughs> people had worries about that. Uh, I had to get special lenses. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that us three freaks 
can take we'll, this we'll, out we'll of anyone. Stop but, there, though, Rick, because um, I was on TV briefly. There was a thing about The Office on uh, Top Ten TV Bastards on Channel 4, and I appeared on there briefly talking about the show. And um, there's this girl who's a girlfriend of a friend of mine, and she's and she's like, I saw you on TV last night. I went, yeah. She went, I'll tell you this, you're better looking on TV than you are in real life, and that's good for you. And I went, I, went, I was like... Oh, I, I don't know if that was a compliment, because it's Definitely like... Definitely not. Well, I, I'm not on TV, so it's, it's not yeah. beneficial in any way. <laughs> yeah. But that's like... Do right, you have to step out of the TV. But that's like saying, I normally find you pretty repulsive. Yeah. I have opinion changed slightly last night because you were on the box. Yeah. I didn't know, it, it sounded like it was a compliment. <laughs> through, the, through the aid of a different... Yeah. yeah through the, the aid of lighting. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> appearing like every, for 12 seconds on screen in small doses. Oh. Right, um... I wanted to talk about UFOs today, and I haven't. I've sort of ping-ponged around a bit there. Maybe do it next time. Which I thought was a nice way to sort of chat about another mystery. The mystery of UFOs. I've sort of been watching quite a bit of footage on the internet of uh, UFOs recently. I think it's just a, a good escape, and it? You know, everything's a bit sort of shit at the minute, isn't it? No matter where you're living, no matter what country you're in, everything just seems a little bit shitty. Um, so sort of looking at otherworldly stuff is uh, is just a, a good escape. And there's loads of footage out there. Some of it you kind of go, oh, that looks good. Some of it is, is a joke. I mean, there was one that I clicked on. That was a, a bloke that was, it was clearly off his tits because he was filming something out of his bedroom window. He was going, there's a bright light, oh look, I can't believe it, I'm being visited, there's a bright light, and it was, it was clearly a street light. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of knobheads like that, but now and again, you get some footage or hear an interview or something that you go, well, this confirms it for me. Um, like, you know, there's other stuff out there. And it was, um, it was a bit of a chat that Joe Rogan was having, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast, he was chatting to some commander who um, was flying about in a, like a, you know, a fighter jet and um, and he was whizzing about enjoying himself, um, turns his head and sees this UFO just floating about above the water and he was like what's that and now this fella's seen loads of stuff if there was new technology out there that we don't know about, he probably would know about it. But he saw this thing and he was like, I, I don't know what that is. And he started ping-ponging about all over the shop. Um, he said it was shaped like a tic-tac and it moved about like nothing he's ever seen move about before. It was like going left, right, up, down, fa and at high speed as well. It just didn't make sense to him. Right? Um, they got some radar footage of it. I'll just show you that. This was it here. It was like moving along at high speed and it was just turning at the same time, which is a bit odd. But um, who knows what it was. But I've had a, a theory for a while. <coughs> Octopus. If you look at them, they look a bit alienish, don't they? This UFO was floating above the sea, so there's a connection there already. Um, all the arms, which you know would probably come in handy if you if you're flying about something that that commander saw. I imagine that's got a lot of joysticks, a lot of buttons to press. You need a lot of arms, so there's that. And I saw this video ages ago. Yeah, I'll show you this mimic octopus. All right. Now the skill that it's got, it's like. Um, let me just show you this, right? So this diver here, there he is in the water, just swimming along, minding his own business, doing a bit of filming, not much to see really. And he just sees this little bit of seaweed, thinks nothing of it. There's a little fish, little black and white fish. Oh, that's nice. There's not much else here. I'll, I'll just film that black and white fish there, moving about. And there, oh, good Jesus! What is that? An alien? That is an alien there. Um. Let's just rewind it again. It goes from that, just looking like a blob of moss, to that. That is amazing, and off it shoots, look. Going back to planet Zonk. 
And think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? If you were an alien, where would you land? You wouldn't bother landing on land, on Earth. Because it's, it's not going to be left empty for long, is it? Is it you're going to find a little plot, you'll go, this is alright. And before you know it, bulldozers will turn up and you know build a new Starbucks or something. So they're better off going into the sea. And there's more of it. The, the Earth's 70% water. So if you're going to sort of base yourself anywhere, you're better off in the water. Especially at the minute, it seems like one of the safest places now, doesn't it? I don't think the uh, I don't think they get the virus underwater. And I tell you another thing that makes me think that I, that I'm right here. If you Google big big octopus, what comes up is the Pacific octopus, right? Where was where was this uh, Tic Tac UFO spotted? Over the Pacific. Makes you think, doesn't it? Could be wrong, I could be right. I can't imagine spiders from Mars being any more weirder than um, spiders from Earth, to be honest. They're just odd, aren't they? How do you make them weirder? Um, I've been I've been going to YouTube a lot during the um, the lockdown, and there's two things I go to if I'm not actually looking for anything, you know, in particular. Um, there's big waves, right? You know, you, you get like uh, fishermen or those blokes who are shifting freight out in the North Sea and they do videos of the waves that are outside during bad weather and it's mental. There's like 50 foot waves and they're just, um, it just doesn't bother them at all. You can hear them chatting to each other, arguing over a game of cards. Meanwhile, outside, there's waves, like, you know, the end of that film, Deep Impact, and it just doesn't bother them. Yet, yeah, it, it sort of, it freaks me, it freaks me well out to know that waves are that big and are bashing about on the same planet that I'm sat on. So there's that um, I like looking at, and spiders, and they sort of terrify me, but at the same time, I like looking at them. And I, I think... The thing that freaks me out is the legs, because sometimes a spider can be quite big, you know, the body. But I can I can pick things up like beetles and stuff like that that have the same size body, but it's them legs, just big. It's the big legs that, fr which is weird, because, you know, one of the things that can make a woman sort of attractive is long legs, and it doesn't. Don't freak you out. Um, I knew maybe it would if a woman had eight legs. I don't know. Maybe it w maybe it wouldn't be. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Just just Google um, the Goliath spider, will you? Look at the size of that. There's one on the internet. Just uh, I think it's the first image that comes up. It's sat in a frisbee, and its feet are hanging over the edge. It's got kneecaps. Uh, have a look at it. I mean, obviously, don't if you if you're one of them people who uh, doesn't like spiders and you can't even look at them, then don't. But it is mental. Um, right, the other day I did some rock busters. I thought I'd just um, give you the answers. The first one, the initials were A G. The clue was how would you? Uh, what did I say? I said I said uh, what's one of the ways you describe Kermit? Right, how does Kermit look? He's, uh, he's green, isn't he? He's all green. Kermit's all green. All green. Al green. Al green is the answer. Um, like I say, it's a little bit cryptic. You have to, you have to think about it. Um, so well done if you got that one. Second one, the initial was M. The clue was, I might phone you, I might not. So what's going on there? What's another word for, for calling someone? Bell you, right? You might bell someone. I might bell you later. So if you might phone them, you might not. You may. You may bell them. Mabel. Maybell. Mabel. That's Mabel. Um, who's out at the minute. It's Nina Cherry's kid, that, isn't it? That's when you know you're getting old, isn't it? When pop stars you listen to as a kid have had kids and they're, they're now pop stars. Madness. So yeah, Mabel for the second one. And then the last one was DL. 
the clue was the Australian asked the Impressionist to do one of those people whose um, arms and legs fall off. So what are they called? They're called uh, lepers, aren't they? Lepers. If you're Australian, you'd probably say lipper. So the Impressionist had asked the person to do uh, do one of them people, so they're asking them to, to do a lipper. Do a lepper. Do a lipper. A few of you got that. No problems. Uh, so well done. Something to do, wasn't it? And um, might do some more, especially if this lockdown carries on.